Hello Matrix, um, today we're going to be looking at human evolution as requested by someone in the comments. So first we have the examination guidelines, I'm not going to read through them, but you can pause through if you'd like. Then for the introduction, hominid is the group consisting of modern humans, chimpanzees, gorillas and orangutans, all of the members of the group hominidae. Then hominin is the group consisting of modern humans, extinct human species, and our in immediate ancestors. So that will be Homo erectus, Homo habilis, those species. Then we'll look at the similarities between African apes and humans. So first, the upper limbs. In both African apes and humans, they are long, they move freely. The scapula is not attached to the vertebral column, both of them. They rotate at the elbow. They have flat nails instead of claws, and they have opposable thumbs, which provided with the ability to have a power grip and also a precision grip. The brain is large compared to its body mass and parts interpreting information from the eyes and hands is enlarged. For the vision, the eyes are in the front. There are different angles which allow for depth. They have binocular vision which means that they use both eyes to see and they also have stereoscopic vision. Their offspring, they have fewer offspring than other mammals they are dependent on their parents for survival, and the parents teach survival skills to their offspring. Their upright posture, they can both sit upright, and this provides them with a better view, frees the upper limbs, and also they can walk like this for a short distance. Now the differences between African apes and humans. Bipedalism, bipedalism is first, so they can occasionally sit upright. They're quadrupedal, actually, and their foramen magnum is opposite the eyes. However, in humans, they are always upright, they are known as bipedal, and their foramen magnum is at the base of the skull. Then we get to their faces. So African apes have a prognathous face, which means that their forehead slopes backwards, they have a non-defined chin, a flat nose and jaw, and a pronounced brow and cranial ridges. Humans are non-prognathous, which means that their foreheads don't slope backwards, they have a defined chin, a prominent nose and jaw, and their ridges are not pronounced, and this includes the brow and the cranial ridges. The jaw shape. In African apes, their jaw is U-shaped, it is rounded at the front, and there are also parallel sides, meaning the teeth closer to the back of the mouth is parallel to the teeth on the other side. However, in humans, their jaw is more V-shaped. Obviously, there is a gentle curve at the front. Their dentition. African apes have larger canines and large spaces between the canines and the premolars. Their dental formula is 2133. In humans, they have smaller canines when you compare them to African apes and also smaller spaces between the teeth. Their dental formula is 2123. An enlarged brain. African apes have a large brain compared to other organisms, while humans have a larger brain than any of the other organisms. It is also 1,400 milliliters large. Then the skull. The skull is basically just everything that I've mentioned before besides bipedalism and also the enlarged brain. So that includes the flat face, the jaw shape, and dentition. Then there's also a smaller cr cranium, pronounced brow ridges, and more sloping forehead. I just put those in there so that you'd know around what area you have to speak about if they ask you a question about the skull. Then for humans, they have a larger cranium, a less sloping forehead, and non-pronounced brow ridges. Then we have more evidence of evolution. So cultural evidence. The apes use various sounds to communicate, while humans have created artificial languages to communicate. The ability to communicate through artificial language enabled humans to communicate more effectively. Early hominids used stones and branches in everyday life, and Homo habilitation, ugh, sorry, Homo habilis made tools, um, the first proper tools. That species is also known as the handyman. So basically, under cultural evidence, we have tools and we have language. Then for genetic evidence, there's identical DNA structure, a similar sequence of genes, and similar portions of DNA with no functions. And this is also something that we learned in evolution, the general chapter. I hope you'll be able to read this. Um, shout out to Jessica for making this little diagram. So basically, this shows the different types of species that were discovered, where they were discovered, 
who discovered them and also how old they are known to be and what species they form into. It also show you, ugh, sorry, shows what ape-like characteristics they have and what human-like characteristics they have. So we start off with Ardipithecus, which is the oldest one we know, that is also in this group of species. So first we have um, Ardipithecus cadaver, or Ardi. It was, it's thought that it, was, it lived about 5.6 million years ago. It was discovered by Seleshi Semor in Ethiopia. Then we have Romidus, which was thought to be lived to have lived 4.3 million years ago. It was discovered by Tim White in Ethiopia as well. The ape-like characteristics of Ardipithecus is a small brain, prognathous features, and a grasping big toe, and the human-like features are that they were thought to be bipedal. Then we move on to Australopithecus. Here we have five different um, fossils. So first we have Australopithecus africanus, and Littlefoot is the name of that one. It was thought to have lived between 4.2 and 3.9 million years ago. It was discovered by Ron Clark in the Sarfontein Caves. Then we have Australopithecus afarensis, or Lucy. It was thought that she lived, or yeah, she lived 3.2 million years ago. It was discovered by Donald Johansson in Ethiopia as well. You'll see that a lot of these were found in Ethiopia. Um, then we get to Australopithecus africanus, or tone child. It was thought that it lived 2.8 to 2.6 million years ago. It was discovered by Raymond Dart in Taung. Then we get to Australopithecus africanus, Mrs. Place. You'll see that Littlefoot and Mrs. Place are both africanus. It was thought that it lived 2.6 million years ago. It was discovered by, discovered by Robert Broom and it was found in the Stagfontein Caves. Um, also note that it was first thought that it was a female primate, but this is actually Mr. slash Mrs. Place, so either should be okay. Then we get to Australopithecus sediba or Caravo. We believe it lived 1. Point, sorry, 1.98 to 1.78 million years ago. It was discovered by Matthew and Lee Berger at the Malapa site. Then we get to the characteristics of Australopithecus. So the ape-like features, a small brain, prognathus, and 1.2 meters in height. That's quite short if you compare it to humans. Then the human characteristics, bipedalism, long arms, and also the pelvis. And that was mostly characteristics of Sediba or Krabo. Then we get to Homo. So we have Homo habilis, Homo erectus, and then as humans, Homo sapiens. So Homo habilis, or handyman, as I mentioned earlier, was thought to have lived 2 million years ago. It was discovered in Africa. And then Homo erectus was thought to have lived 1.5 million years ago. It was discovered in Africa, Asia, and Europe. So we can see now that they're migrating. And then Homo sapiens, the first one we discovered was Forest Birdman. It was thought to have lived 200,000 to 150,000 years ago. And it was discovered by Forest Bird in the Free State. The ape-like features, so for Homo habilis, it had a small brain and it was 1.2 meters in height. That's similar to the Australopithecus. Then um, Homo erectus had the head of an ape. So if you look at the table we did earlier, you can see that there are prognathous features, um, the jaw, all those things. And then for human-like characteristics, in Homo habilis, we have human-like teeth, less prognathous, and a rounded head with a larger brain. For Homo erectus, the neck faced down, it was tall and it had a larger brain. And then the Homo sapien, a 1,200 to 1,800 milliliter brain, a flat face and non-prognathous. And we know that humans generally have a 1,400 milliliter brain. And then that's it for that. Then we get to the out of Africa hypothesis. This states that modern humans originated in Africa and then migrated out of Africa to other countries. The support for this, the oldest fossils of Australopithecines, Homo habilis and bipedal organisms have been found in Africa. The oldest fossils of Homo erectus have been found in Africa. And mutations in mitochondrial DNA shows that the oldest female ancestors of humans are from Africa. The genetic evidence for the out of Africa hypothesis. Mitochondrial DNA is first, and then we'll look at the Y chromosome. So for mitochondrial DNA, 
During fertilization, only the mitochondria of the female is passed to offspring, not the mitochondria of the male, which is the father. By following mutant nucleotides in mitochondrial DNA, we are able to trace our line, a female line of descent. The mutations in mitochondrial DNA take place much faster than in nuclear DNA, which makes it a lot easier to trace the female lineages. lineage. Sorry. Then we get to the Y chromosome, which we know is characteristic of males. It does not undergo crossing over with its mismatched X chromosome, so most of the DNA in it is passed from father to offspring without being mixed with the mother's nucleotide, and this allows us to trace our male lineage. Then we get to other theories, so there are arguments against evolution. The first one is that the Earth is only about 6,000 years old and not how many ever billion years old. The second one is that the probability of forming a single molecule by chance is incredibly low, so that has to do with the first um, environment of the Earth, when it was mostly water and hydrogen, you know, that story from grade 10 or grade 11. And then the third last, the third one is when things are left on their own, they get more disorderly or more unorganized. So that basically, the intention there is that they're saying, if the species was created so long ago or they lived so long ago and they were left to be with no um, direction, if I can put it that way, then they wouldn't have evolved the way that humans have. And then the, the one that is most important is that the fossil record has too many gaps. And that's usually the one that most people use to support their case against the out of Africa hypothesis. Alternative beliefs, these aren't really important, but just to mention a few, you get creationism, intelligent design, literalism, and theistic evolution. Then the last thing I just want to look at is a phylogenetic tree. Um, usually people have trouble with this, so I'd just like to show you how you can use one. So this represents the possible evolutionary relationships among a set of organisms. So over here we can see that there's an ancestor. And the arrows going this way show that we're moving into the more recent times. So it says here that when speciation occurs, it is represented as branching on the tree. A single ancestral lineage gives rise to two or more daughter lineages. So then you can see here, this is when the event takes place when they move to different sides of the spectrum, if I can put it that way. And this is where the ancestor would be. So here you can see that this and all of these develop from the same ancestor. But number three is more closely related to two than it is to one, and four is more closely related to three than it is to two. But they all share this common ancestor. Um, I hope that you understand this. There's another similar graph, which I cannot for the life of me remember the name of, but it's basically the same idea. It's just a straight line. Um, oh, it's a cladogram. Yes, so it's a straight line and then it has lines going down like this. And then the common ancestor would be here. So this shows a break. Here's a break and here's a break. So then you can see which species are more closely related. These would be more closely related than, for example, X and the common ancestor. I hope this has helped and good luck.